Hi there, welcome to week 17 of Nutrition Bites. So today I'm going to be sharing a recipe for whole grain vegan pancakes. All right, so we'll talk about the ingredients. Then because this recipe includes whole grains, we're gonna talk about the different types of whole grains and then the benefits of whole grains. And then we'll talk about what the difference is between refined grains versus unrefined grains. And then we'll touch a little bit on the gluten-free conversation because that's a very hot topic. And then I'll present the weekly challenge. All right, so this is my recipe for whole grain pancakes. So just a note, the recipe is, um, it makes a large amount of the dry mix. So I make one big amount and I keep it in the freezer and then I you know, mix it with the wet ingredients as needed. So if you need to make a smaller amount, you can certainly cut the recipe in half or in quarters um, to make a less dry mix. But just so you know, the dry mix makes a big batch and the wet ingredients listed here are just for like one serving. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of whole grains. There's tons of options. It's not just whole wheat bread. That's our only source of whole grains. We have barley, brown rice, buckwheat, cracked wheat, farro, millet, oatmeal, popcorn, whole grain cornmeal, whole grain couscous, and then we have whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, whole wheat crackers, and quinoa. So there's lots of options to choose from. Lots of options if you're gluten-free. Um, there's still many whole grains that you can choose from. All right, so there's tons of benefits to including whole grains in your diet. The first is that they are very high in fiber, both insoluble and soluble fiber. They're also high in B vitamins, and they are a great source of plant protein as well as complex carbohydrates. Uh, they help us to feel full and satiated. So if sometimes if you have a salad and you feel like it's not very filling, try adding some quinoa or some brown rice to it. It can really help to make you feel more satisfied. Um, studies have shown that those who eat whole grains, uh, it's correlated with having a healthy body weight. It's also been associated with better heart health, um, and it may help to lower cholesterol, and that is due to the soluble fiber aspect. And then it can help support healthy digestion, which is then due to the insoluble fiber aspect. And overall, um, whole grain consumption has been associated with a reduced risk for most chronic diseases. All right, let's talk about unrefined versus refined grains. So whole grains contain the entire grain kernel, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. So there's a picture here for your reference. So the bran, the germ, and the endosperm are all included in whole grains. So these are whole wheat flour, cracked wheat, oatmeal, whole grain cornmeal, brown rice, things like that. Refined grains have been milled and this process removes the bran and the germ. So all we're left with is the endosperm. So this gives the grain a much finer texture and improves their shelf life. But in doing this, it removes much of the fiber, the iron, and many of the B vitamins. So again, that bran is removed as well as the germ. And so all that's left is the endosperm. And so we've gotten rid of a lot of the good things that come with a whole grain. So again, it's also kind of a spectrum as far as processing. So we have white bread that has been very processed. We have whole wheat bread that is uh, still processed um, into a flour, but it's retaining that bran. And then we have things like whole grain bread, which add in you know oats and nuts and some of these other whole, more whole plant foods into the bread. All right, so let's talk a little bit about gluten-free. This is a hot topic. It seems like everyone and their mother is going gluten-free. So I just wanted to share my own thoughts and my opinions on this topic. So there are some people that a gluten-free diet is a must for. So if you have celiac disease or you know you have a gluten sensitivity or intolerance, a gluten-free diet is a must for you. You need to follow this to function and to thrive. But other than that, there is really no reason to cut out gluten. Again, if you've cut it out and you notice that you feel better, maybe you don't bloat as much, maybe you have you know unpleasant symptoms that have resolved because you've cut out gluten, again, please continue to be gluten-free if you feel better. But if you have cut out gluten and you feel no different, it's not necessarily something that you need to cut out of your diet. And this is because a gluten-free diet is not necessary, necessarily a healthier diet. Gluten-free diets can still be very highly processed. And I think what happens is that we see a package of cookies or crackers or whatever labeled gluten-free and we think, oh, that's healthy, I can eat the whole bag. 
well, that habit in and of itself isn't really healthy and gluten-free or not, you're still eating a bunch of processed food, potentially a bunch of sugar, sodium, things like that. So the only reason that a gluten-free diet would be healthier is if you're cutting out all the refined products and you're just sticking with whole plant foods. In that case, it would be much healthier because you're not having those processed foods. Um, there's also not really any strong evidence that a gluten-free diet will help you to lose weight. Again, this is, if you're cutting out processed foods, yes, absolutely, it's going to help you lose weight, but it's not necessarily tied to the gluten itself. All right, so for this week, I'd love to challenge you to swap some of your refined grains for some more whole grain sources for the week. Who knows, you might find a new favorite. Thank you so much for joining me. That's all I have for today, and I'll see you all next week.